Hello guys, today we're going to have a look at adding a flasher unit to either your RC tractor or your die cast model and you might want the flasher unit to control warning lights like I have here or alternatively just to control some indicators but on hazard warning lights on your on your static model for example. So the example I have here is for an RC tractor. I just have two warning beacons on each side of the mower here and it's just simply controlled by a 555 timer and just a little switch to turn it on and off. So the idea here is that the battery packs go into these two um, these two mowers and the one in the middle is where the electronics go and you can connect it up to a connection on the front of the tractor to give the, the battery packs here a, a connection to the RC tractor so this was really designed to work with the front tractor and uh, you can see here this is an 800 milliamp hour battery that uh, just about fits in here so that would be 1600 milliamp hours by just putting this uh, this model on the front of the tractor so that's quite a quite a significant battery life today we're going to talk about the 555 timer and uh, the different circuits that you're going to need depending on whether you want to make hazards like this or if you want to do your indicator lights so it really comes down to the frequency that you need and you adjust the frequency by changing the resistors and the capacitors okay so this is the 555 timer that we're gonna gonna work with this is an a stable circuit that we're using here and it's governed by this equation here so the important values that we need to pick are r1 r2 and c so that's r1 r2 and c those are the values that determine our frequency so the output is going to be on three here we can see we have our resistor to limit the current to our led and it's just going to switch on and off now this circuit is using a nine volt battery and for certain 555 timers you need to be over 4.5 volts so i think for an any 555 the voltage range that the 555 timer works over is 4.5 volts to 16 volts but what you want to buy is an lmc 555 that's a cmos 555 timer and it will operate from 1.5 volts to 15 volts because we are going to use a 3.7 volt battery or, or some similar small battery for our um, for our circuit so make sure you buy an LMC 555 timer because it will work to a much lower voltage now there's two frequencies that we really want to look at here we need the indicator frequency and a warning beacon frequency so indicators usually need to flash about 60 to 120 uh, times per second or per minute uh, 60 to 120 flashes per minute which is about 1 to 2 hertz so we we'll pick a frequency in the middle around about 1.5 so if we set R1 to 1k so that's 1000 ohms R2 to 50,000 ohms it's a 50k resistor and C to 10 microfarads we'll get a frequency of 1.43 hertz and that should be roughly enough to give us a good indicator flash so I'll set that circuit up now in a minute and we'll uh, test that out if you wanted the warning beacon frequency we should be able to use a 1k for R1 so the same as the other circuit R2 now is 10k this time so 10,000 ohms and C is 10 microfarads again so I've kept R1 and C the same and only adjusted R2 that should make things pretty simple uh, that will give us a frequency of around about 6.86 hertz now that's roughly what it's going to give us it'll be it'll, uh, might not be exactly that but it'll, it'll be close enough and um, i'm going to mark both of these up now and you'll get an idea if you go to this link address here you'll find different circuits like this one this one came from this uh, this link down here and also there's a calculator for the frequency there so you just enter in your r1 r2 and c values and it will tell you what frequency your circuit is going to oscillate at and uh, that should give you an idea how to set up one of these circuits 
This is the circuit for the warning beacon frequency. We have our 1k resistor, 10k resistor and our 10 microfarad capacitor. And um, this should give us roughly 6.8 Hz. We'll uh, hook it up to the oscilloscope now in a second and we'll see what it's actually given us. This capacitor here is 0 0.1 microfarads and it's going from pin 5 to ground and that just stops accidental triggering. I have an LED here. I'll show you that in a second when I hook on the capacitor or the resistor here, and that's going to be between pin three and uh, ground basically. So resistor is uh, 470 ohms. That's going to go from pin three to this diode, and the diode goes to ground, and that should give us our flashing LED. But I'll show you the waveform that we're generating first. Just to mention something. Uh, this is what they call a trap for young players so I set up my circuit here and I was having trouble getting the the output frequency so at first it wasn't working and then it started to give a slight little pulse so it clearly wasn't getting proper grounding and uh, I looked up the circuit checked that it was all right and then I started moving around the wires to see was there a loose wire I tried changing the Pastors didn't find it. But then when I moved this wire, which had been my ground, I realised that um, there was obviously something wrong with this wire. So there must be a break at one end of this wire, because when I got it connected right to the pin of the uh, capacitor, I had it at an angle and it uh, connected the ground and the waveform showed up. So if you're having trouble getting your circuit to work, make sure and check all your wires. Make sure that uh, you're not you don't have a dodgy connection somewhere, it could be something that simple. Okay, so I've added the power here and it um, seems to be working alright. We are around about uh, 6 hertz, it would appear. So it's a little bit uh, slower than what the calculator said, but you know, it's not it's not madly off, it's, it's close enough. I mean, this isn't a, a critical application we're looking at here. So if we come back out. I'll add the resistor here, and pin 3 is the output, like I said, and that's the frequency of our light. So that seems like a reasonable frequency for a hazard warning light, so that's, uh, that seems to work pretty good. I'll switch out the resistors, get a, well it'll have to be 5 10k resistors, but uh, we'll get the 50k for R2 now and see what that works out to. But now I have five 10k resistors here, all in series, gives us our 50k. And if we take a look at the frequency here, we can see we're about uh, 1.25 hertz, which is okay, and 50% duty cycle, so that's pretty good. Now I'll just add the resistor for the LED. So that looks like a reasonable frequency for indicators. If you could imagine uh, four of those around your tractor, that would be pretty good. So that's all there is to these uh, 555 timer circuits. It's pretty simple. I'll just do one more thing uh, for the hazard lights to try and get uh, this dual, dual LED flash here. So where this one flashes, then this one flashes. So let's say for the on pulse of the 555 timer this one is on for the off pulse of the 555 timer this LED is on I'll just show you how to do that next I've switched back to the 6 hertz uh, signal so back to our warning uh, frequency so if we take a look what I've done here I have two LEDs here now and a resistor for each LED so maybe I'll stop the flashing just for a second so, what's happening here is, uh, I have the positive voltage here, so this is connected to the positive end of the battery, we go through the resistor to the positive lead of the LED, the negative lead of the LED goes to the positive lead of the other LED, and the negative lead of that LED goes to this resistor, which then goes to ground. So, we have positive voltage through the LED to the second LED, the ground. In the middle, we have the output of the 555 timer, okay? So, if 
you think about it, so if we if we do it really simple, we forget about the resistors, but you have to obviously put the resistors in to limit the current. But for for a simple way of thinking of it, forget about the resistors. Say we have five volts on this side of the LED. Now on the off cycle of the 555 timer, you'll have zero volts here. So that's five volts across this LED on on the zero cycle on the off cycle of the uh, 555 so 5 volts across this LED that LED is going to light up if we look at this other one it has um, 0 volts here and 0 volts at its other leg so there's no voltage across this LED so it won't light up so the current is flowing from the positive of the battery through this wire to the 555 timer to ground okay so then when the 555 timer switches to positive 5 volts here, we now have 5 volts on, on this leg of the LED, the first LED, 5 volts on this leg of the LED, so there's no potential difference, so that LED is not going to light. We have 5 volts here on this leg of the LED, and 0 volts here, so with 5 volts across this LED, it's going to light up. So that's how in the off cycle of the 555 timer this LED lights and in the on cycle this one lights so in the off cycle this sinks the current and in the on cycle it sources the current so that's how you can get these two LEDs flashing at alternate uh, times so when this one's on this one's off basically that's how uh, that's how I got that uh, flashing of the beacons and I think that looks pretty good for uh, for warning beacons, you could put those on the cab of your tractor, put them on on the mowers like I did, or you know anything like that should work fine. So that's basically all there is to the 555 timer circuits. I'm thinking of making a little PCB and maybe getting it made with a 556 timer, which has two uh, 555 timers built into one chip, and then I would set it up so that you could have uh, on one half of the board you would have warning lights controls for warning lights and on the other side you would have controls for indicators so if you were making a static model you could uh, add warning lights or add add uh, indicators with just this simple little board and I'm planning to use it maybe in a couple of uh, accessories for the tractor, some simple things. It would just be a handy little board instead of having to set up a microcontroller and program it to just have a board that you just plug the LEDs into and that's it. So I'm thinking that I could make uh, get a lot of these PCBs made because it's cheaper to make a lot of PCBs than it is to make only 10 say. So if people would be interested in buying a uh, 555 timer circuits for adding these kind of LEDs to their um, to their static models or their RC models uh, you can let me know in the comments and if the if it seems like a popular idea I'll uh, look into selling them from the website I would reckon it's probably going to be less than uh, 10 or 15 euros when you include all the chips it depends how many I can get manufactured you know if if we need a hundred of them it'll be cheaper than 20 of them so I need to uh, figure that out and if people would let me know if they'd be interested in it I'll, uh, I'll look into that and get a better idea of what the final price would be um, so that's everything for this week if you've uh, enjoyed that video Make sure and hit the like button and if you have any comments or questions either post them below the video or head to the forum. And uh, that's everything so thanks very much for watching.